Hey guys, Mike from Fortinet Guru here. Um, quick video explaining zones, why I use them, things of that nature. So, basically, right now I have six interfaces. I just stood up a, a FortiGate VM real quick, specifically for this video. But I have six interfaces. So, if you utilize a FortiGate the way they do out of the box, your policy will end up being you know, interface to interface, interface to interface, etc., etc., for each policy. Now, that will give you a whole, when you're looking at it specifically through interface pair view, that's going to give you a whole bunch of sections that you'll have to click through, and it can get confusing. Um, one of the ways that I like to do things, and it, it helps out, especially in bigger environments where you know, you might have new technicians coming in, having to perform work on the gate, uh, especially enterprise environments. Keeping it very, very simple. Inside, outside, DMZ usually works best. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my interfaces page. And I'm going to go create new zone. I'm going to call this one inside. And I'm going to cl click my three networks that would be inside. Now, here's the kicker. Make sure that block intrazone traffic is checked. Because if it's not, the moment you have these networks in the same group, they're all going to be able to talk to each other without policy. Which, you know, that would be fine if you had just a separate Wi Fi network that was on a different subnet from your, you know, your physical cabled one, etc. Let's say you're not using a Ford AP, so you don't have things bonded in that way. You know, you could do that. Or if you have a bunch of IPsec tunnels that you don't really want to do policy on, you just want to have like a concentrator to allow them to connect without having to have policies in each direction, you could uncheck that and just throw all your IPsec interfaces in there. But for the sake of this video, we block it because, you know, this is a test network, a guest network, and a production network. These three networks should not be able to talk to each other directly. Inside, okay. I'm going to create another zone call it outside and then throw my external interfaces in here. Now, as you can see here, I have my two zones, inside and outside, guest networks, etc., and then my externals. For the sake of this video, my external interfaces, those are just going to be viewed as internet connections, etc. So let's say you have multiple internet connections. Now, what this does for you is this makes your policy extremely clean you're basically going to end up with three pairs here. Inside to outside, outside to inside, and then of course inside to inside to allow the inter-network communication. So, you know, you could just have web access and say from my inside network to my outside network. All to all. Allow. Click OK. Now what this policy means is that all three of those networks with a single policy will be able to access the internet instead of having three separate policies. Now, that's cool. Everything's clean. In environments where you have to have different rule sets for the different areas, you just you know break it up by the actual subnet instead of saying all, and then you can have everything in the same interface pair. And then let's say, you know, I need to be able to enable people to come out. So let's just say RDP in outside to inside. We'll do our sources as all as well. Obviously, this is not a true policy. I'll leave that on for the video. So, our policy is really, really straightforward. This will be inside to inside communication. And we'll just do inside, inside. All, all, allow, no narrow, okay. So, as you can see, we have three interface pairs. Inside the outside, that's like your web access. You're being able to check email, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All three of those networks can now feed off this one policy. Inside to inside, 
this policy, the way it stands right now, basically undoes that checkbox of, you know, allowing intra-zone traffic. But basically what you would want to do is, let's say, you know, network 1 is 10.0.0.0 slash 24. And you need it to be able to get to the 10.1.0 slash 24. You would just, you know, change your source and destination, etc. It's going to give you a lot, a lot of good granularity on your inside to inside. Or you could do something like this and just use one policy to apply all layer 7, etc. to it. But, you know, the main thing between zones, it's going to keep you, help you keep your sanity because it's going to greatly reduce the number of interface pairs that you see in your view. Um, most people look at it from the interface pair view because it gives you a direct insight of, you know, where am I coming from, where am I going to. Whereas, you know, if you're looking at the uh, sequence view, which is actually better in areas where you have more policy, um, you know, you have to actually pay attention to this. Whereas I can just say I only need to look at inside to outside. Okay, sweet. Here's my rules. So um, I use these. It helps my technicians come in and be able to do policy really easy, really quick. Um, I just say, hey, this computer's on the inside. It needs to be able to talk to this side on the outside. Allow it. And they go, okay. You know, monkey see, monkey do. They It dumps it down really easy, and it helps them get a more f familiarity with the network as far as where things are going, etc. So... That's the basic intro in the zones. If you have any questions about it, please don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, otherwise, have a good day.